What's going on, Les? We're back with another Player of the Week review. A lot of people have been asking me about this European Club Championship one. We've got Mbappe, De Ligt, De Rea. They are the both of the boosters there as well. Mbappe is not a booster. That honor falls to Julian Alvarez as well. And this guy is a beast, man. This is on our second Road to Glory profile. But on our main profile, we did actually spin for Alvarez. We got Harry Kane as well as David Rea across both profiles. And we got Sergio Roberto here on this one as well. The rest of the players, I think, apart from the top four and including David Rea in this, I think are kind of average. We're going to go through all of those. Sergio Roberto, listen, boys, honestly, depending on where your team is, these are either going to be upgrades or they're not going to even make your squad. Like, if you're comparing Sergio Roberto with 100 overall Pirlo, or Vieira, or Rijkaard, as a CMF that's going to be getting forward and back as a destroyer or a box-to-box. -box. Even Barella, Bellingham, any of those. It's going to be very difficult to kind of like get these players as kind of like somebody to shake your squad up. Now, where you can have a bit of crack with these cards is the player levels and the, or the, the fact that you don't need to train their player levels. They've got none. The fact that they've got A rating for the week with the player update. This is a fairly good Sergio Roberto card. He's got blocker off the rip. He can play multiple positions. He's got super sub. He's got one touch pass through passing. Very nice skills. His stats aren't great in fairness, but it's more about kind of like the card just being able to do a job for you, especially as a super sub. Any card that has a super sub, you don't start them. You bring them on. So any card, it doesn't matter who it is. If they've got super sub, I would always leave them off on the bench and, and, and spin them on if we need them from about the 60th minute onwards or 65, 70 minutes onwards. Just a traditional uh, box to box, standard box to box after that. We also have Witzel. All of these cards from this screen here don't have the manager boost and this card doesn't have a player boost either, but he does have high weak foot accuracy and unwavering form. He can play CB, DMF, CMF. It's a very solid card. I think his speed lets him down a little bit towards where the meta is at the moment, but he does have some phenomenal player skills. Everything you could possibly want, apart from acrobatic clearance. That's the one thing he's missing here. Doesn't really need heading, I don't think, because he's, you know, he's fairly tall. Heading would be a nice player skill to have on him, but you can't give it to him. But he has blocker, interception, very decent defense stats that are going to be pretty much all in the 90s, apart from defensive engagement. Is it worth spinning for him? I would potentially say no. The same with Fermin Lopez. He's down as a whole player. Classic number 10s and whole players now are more alike than they've ever been before. I have a video on classic number 10s. I would definitely recommend you guys to check it out. There's a lot of details gone into it. We've literally played 20 to 25 hours against Division 1, 2 and 3 opponents really testing the classic number 10 with, you know, uh, Dybala. Odegaard and Gundogan as well. And Fermin is not going to really shake that up. He's just kind of a standard CMF hole player. Play him attack and midfielder style as well. Fairly okay player stats. I mean, he does not He does have one touch pass, but he doesn't have any dribbling stats. And this is kind of where the game is at at the moment. Depay as well. I don't really recommend spinning for Depay. If you're, if you're spinning for him, if you get him, great. He's a super sub. Bring him on. Everything that I said about Sergio Roberto applies. Uh, Romani then as well as an extra front man Solid stats I mean obviously speed isn't too bad It's okay uh, Player skills are pretty decent He's got aerial superiority But he doesn't have acrobatic clearance Listen at this stage Let's don't settle for a centre back Without you know Sliding tackle Man marking aerial superiority Heading acrobatic clearance Blocker and interception There's so many players That you can just get With every stat And every uh, player skill that it does make a small bit of a difference. And I'm going to show you that in a future video if you miss the live streams. You also have Marino here as well, another box to box. Too slow, doesn't really have any standout stats. Fairly okay player skills. He does have one touch pass, but he doesn't have way to pass. He doesn't have low lofted pass. He does have true passing, but that's even a bit busted at the moment. Yeah, I mean, these cards I don't really recommend. Now, these two, Kane and Delict, Bayern Munich teammates, Delict is solid. I still think that the free Halloween edition of Delict is phenomenal if you got him. If you missed out on him, he's not a bad card. This is what I'm talking about. He's got the plus three booster to his defensive stats here. Uh, a defensive awareness, tackling, jumping, and acceleration. Don't worry about the speed, lads. The speed at the moment is just, yeah. I mean, any player can catch any player at the moment with the way that the breakdown of the plays happen. But he's got every player skill that you could possibly want. 
and fighting spirit. As well as that, he does have pinpoint crossing, which is nice. A couple of his cards have had one touch pass. This card doesn't have that, but I think they've started to balance the cards a little bit in anticipation for season six and then eFootball 25 as well. But it's an okay card. The same with Harry Kane. Sorry, I'm after skipping ahead. Harry Kane is kind of a player that's lost in this game for where the gameplay is at. And that's because of his balance and tight possession. Very, very good finisher. I know people will be in the, in the comments below. And if you're one of them, please do get in touch and let me know how wrong I am. People in the comments below will be saying, you know, oh, Harry Kane's beast. He scores two goals a game for me. Of course, he can score two goals a game for you. But once you start to go up the divisions and you start to play against guys that manually defend and know how to, you know, nullify your attacks, Harry Kane doesn't have enough speed to be able to run and gun. So he becomes a target man. And he doesn't have phenomenal physical presence when he's up the box. You know, it's all about getting shots on target. But he does have some nice player skills as well as that one-touch pass to bring everybody into it. But him, Burkamp, any of those guys, they're not really where the game is at at the moment. That brings us to kind of the three best players, which are Alvarez, Mbappe, and David Rea. Now, I'm going to put in a couple of clips maybe of David Rea, or else I'll do a, a specific review of David Rea. This is a phenomenal goalkeeper, lads, especially because he has the booster. You're going to pretty much have all his stats into the 90s or 90 plus. The one difference with this goalkeeper and most goalkeepers that are 185 cm or lower is the fact that he doesn't have good jumping, which is unusual. And that's probably a stat that they're looking to balance going on into eFootball 2025. He does have low punt and long throw as well as penalty saver. It's a solid card, but I really, really was impressed with his reflexes, man. Manually goalkeeping with this guy was phenomenal. Really, really nice. If you do like to do a bit of manual goalkeeping, he can get counterattacks going very, very quickly. And then, of course, we have Mbappe, who is Mbappe. You know what you're getting with Mbappe. Doesn't have the best balance for a run-and-gun card, but it's just a brilliant, brilliant card as well uh, with any of these cards. Now, he doesn't have amazing uh, player skills. He does have double touch, but no flip-flop or... Um, Soul control, he does have gamesmanship, but no track back if you're looking to get a little bit more out of him. He does have Rabona and acrobatic finishing, long range curler. You can't give him any, any skills or train his stats. So it's not the best version of Mbappe. I would definitely say it's not the best version of him, but it's still a run and gun Mbappe. And Mbappe, even standard GP, if you are spinning, I mean, it's a very, very good card. But the player I've been really impressed with and I've played a lot with him is this guy, Julian Alvarez. Absolutely insane player, man. Technique plus three. I've played with him a lot in uh, the other profile that we have where we got him and in this as well where we've tested him on the PS5 a lot. Very, very good dribbling. Picks up really, really good positions. His finishing is good. His passing is good. He plays above his stats a little bit, I think, in terms of his creativity. It's probably down to the fact that he's a whole player and also because of a lot of his player skills. Now, the one thing I don't like about Julian Alvarez is he feels a little bit clunky to get the shot out from underneath his feet. That could just be kind of built into his player ID, but he's definitely a really good player. And he's got such a unique mix of speed, kicking power, shooting, passing and dribbling, as well as having a nice player ID with the soul control, long range curler, long range shooting, one touch pass, true passing. Very unique card. One of the most unique cards in the game, especially for the positions he can play. But that is it, lads. Honestly, I think at this stage, if you've been playing the game for longer than three months, I wouldn't even spin for these, honestly. If you've been playing the game for like a couple of days or a couple of weeks, then these cards will be good. They're worth the 300. And of course, you can get your free one as well. But let me know what you guys think. We will be back with another video quite soon. Did you spin or skip? And I'll talk to you in a bit. Peace.